Hi, I'm Gary Bouton. This is Zara TV at ZaraZone.com, and this month I'm not going to teach you desktop publishing. In fact, I'm not going to try to teach you page layout in one video, but rather this is going to be one session with successive ones popping up in 2014. You'll see how to make your designed printed page more accessible, easier to lay out, and to give you a feel for how elements should be shuffled around a page until they look interesting. Final output does have a bearing on how a piece should be designed. Then I'm going to treat you to the invisible and highly useful grid system for laying your page out. Vincent van Gogh is credited with saying the hardest thing to a design is staring at a blank canvas. So with a grid system, you don't have to stare at a blank canvas. But if you imagine a grid or even lay down guides to create a grid, you can do amazing things. Arranging text, headlines, photos, all in a way that directs the audience's eye to exactly where you want it to go. Page Design Episode 1 is our first stop, so there's no reason not to get to it right now. To begin this month, go to zarazone.com forward slash tutorials. Scroll down the page, click on the Downloads button to download this month's zip archive, unpack it on your system, and get ready to load it in Zara. First of all, before you put your talent into designing a page, talk to the printer first, unless of course you intend to use your personal printer as the final rendering device. A commercial printer will have a few questions for you, and you should have a few questions for them, so you two are in total agreement about how to produce your page or pages. I have no idea what the printer might ask you because I don't know them, but your questions? Well, suppose you have a card you want printed. Let's say it's 5 by 7 inches. So the finished print might look like this if your design is landscape like this one. First, what are the printer's needs for margins for this document? The most common requirements for you to set up on your page in Zara are trim, bleed, and safety margins. The term trim means the measurements for the final trimmed page, whether there is bleed or not, which I'll get to in a moment. Printers generally ask you to set up your document to the trim size, but this suggestion only applies if the commercial printer owns a copy of Zara or there's a pasteboard to include bleed area. If you need to export to PDF, you need to include bleed area in the overall page size, which I'll get to shortly. So in Zara, you press Control shift o to bring up the Options box, then in your Page Size tab, choose Custom from the Paper drop-down box, and then type your width and height values in the appropriate boxes, including Bleed, make sure the page orientation is the way you want it, click Apply, and then click OK to dismiss the box. You can see here that I've set crop marks at the trim size, and as far as the Bleed goes here, I've included it in the page size because I'm going to export this as a PDF. Now, for example, if you want to wind up with a 5x7 card, include an eighth of an inch outside of the card dimensions for bleed, making the dimensions you use in the page size tab in Zara 5 and a quarter by 7 and a quarter inches. Now, if your piece that you want to have printed has no bleed, then definitely set up the page size to the final trim size and don't include any bleed area in your document. You also want to ask the print house if they want crop marks in the document or not. Generally, a printer doesn't want your crop marks. They'll measure their own. As a designer, consider bleed as superfluous visuals on your design page. It's merely a continuation of your design that you intentionally want to be trimmed off. You account for bleed in a design so that depending on any margin of error cutting your pages down, you get design color and elements up to the edge of the final page and not slivers of unprinted white. Typically, a printer will tell you that they want an eighth of an inch on all sides. Finally, there's safety to consider. Safety is also called safety margins, and they typically are an eighth of an inch inside of the trim size. It's a margin of error when cutting the pages, and basically this means that important design elements, especially text, need to lie an eighth of an inch inside the trim area. If this sounds confusing, just consider it a part of setting up a document in Zara, and it's setting up your page so whatever you design can be commercially printed to your expectations. I've included a download document with trim, bleed, and safety set up for you with guides in Zara so you can get a better idea of how pages need to be set up and treated. Now I've been talking about defining bleed, trim, and safety in Zara using Zara's guides. However, if you right-click on a page and you choose Page Options, this goes all the way back to Zara 
a version 6, you can choose bleed margin and type in an amount. I've got the page margin set as 8 inches. That's my type safety. And if I uncheck show page shadow, I've got a much clearer look at the document. You click apply and then OK. And if you look here, the maroon line there is my bleed. In more recent versions of Zara, if you right click and choose show grid guides, show print borders, then you've got another shade there that helps define where the extent of your text should be. Now I'm dragging a swatch onto the background and this is a really good view of your document safety now. Now, these days, an Adobe Acrobat PDF document is usually accepted gladly by a commercial print house, but the document needs to be exported from Zara the way the press man specifies. So perhaps the most important question you can ask as your final question before designing is how the commercial press wants the PDF set up. What color model do they want? What version of PDF is acceptable? Now, this video can't possibly recommend the host of options you have in the export box in Zara, but you can usually get where you want to go if you discuss what it is you will be delivering to the print house and asking these questions. Now, if your pressman contradicts anything that I've said here, you might want to follow their advice and ignore mine. Printing is a continuously changing technology, very fast-paced with computers these days, and any information I might have presented here that's five minutes old might already be out of date. Okay, now that you have a document set up for your design, it's time to meet the grid. It used to be called the Swiss grid system back when I was in school, but we'll just call it the grid here, and you need to learn to love the grid. It helps to think of building a grid for your page layout as an architectural thing. In architecture, you have structure, and then you arrange things within that structure, such as chairs and goldfish bowls and velvet paintings of Elvis. Your elements for your page include drawings, photos, perhaps a bulleted list or a graph, body text, headline text, perhaps subheads, and all of these elements need to work together to get your message across to people. So you design the page to accommodate the elements by creating a grid uh, that won't be printed just so you can creatively organize your design elements so your audience is led from the most important areas in the design to the least. And if your design was a theme park, you'd be the tour guide. You're seeing some examples right now of how to divide a page using a grid. Now a grid can be any number of cells and your elements don't have to precisely fit in the cells, and the elements can straddle cells. The cells can be of any number and any size, so the grid system doesn't confine your design efforts, it structures your creativity so your message is clear to the audience. Although it's fine and well to take a look at how all these examples of using the grid system can help produce diverse and creative layouts, I think it's time to get your hands wet and your feet dirty, as unhygienic as that may sound. I'm going to ask you to open time for skiing.zar now, and a lot of the things I'm going to ask you to do are specific to Zara Designer Pro 9. Now, let's suppose you used MS Word to write this article that's going on the layout. Uh, new to version 9 of Zara is that you can now import a docx file that was created in Word. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to import it now from the zip file you downloaded earlier. So we do file import, import the skiing document, merge it into the page, and it'll land in the center of the page. We want to move it now, uh, move the selected only. And what I want you to do is to take the text tool now and uh, create one big column, you know, a couple margins there. Uh, and one of the new features is that you can set columns by right clicking over the uh, box that you defined. I'd like three columns there. So there we have it. And you can see by the arrow that they're interconnected. I want you to take the uh, text tool and place it in the paragraph, select all, cut, and then place your cursor at the beginning of the uh, three columns. Now you can see you have overflow. What happens in nine now is that with overflow, you need to cut the text first from the page and then you can cut the page. So um, the overflow is gone. We've got uh, our dummy text here. Uh, again, with the uh, text tool, uh, I think that the uh, layout would, look, uh, would have better color 
if uh, the lines were justified. So click the force justify button. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to ask you to do is uh, not do that because uh, <laughs> the text was on top and that was Gary making a mistake. In any event, um, I dragged another line because I'm going to want to rotate that headline in a moment. Let's put the illustration over on the right. So it more or less straddles two columns. So we're still obeying the uh, grid system. And I'd like to control F to put that illustration to the front. And I'm going to do the same thing with the headline. Click on the headline and then click it a second time to put it into a skew and rotation mode. And I want you to take the center and move it over to the bottom of the ski and then pull up on the upper left so that this layout more or less is going downhill like skiing. Got it? So uh, what I want you to do now, I'm going to fuss with that headline. And uh, please feel free to use any font you like. Um, I've hidden my, uh, my actual, my final, and I do apologize for this, my final text over there. Uh, so pick a nice font. Uh, this, this one suggests action, and it's got italics to it and everything. And I'm going to delete uh, the original text. So just pretend you've got uh, some fancy headline text and uh, put it there. Now what we need to do is uh, move the columns down and with the type tool take the upper right control corner and uh, pull it down like this. Then uh, select the second column. I think you can probably anticipate what I want you to do here. If you hold control you can strain the width of the, uh, of the column. And once you've got that down there I know we have some hidden text but basically that's a pretty nice layout and it obeys the Swiss grid system. Wow, I think that's uh, just about the tip of the iceberg when it comes to page design. I'll see you next year with some more design stuff that'll make your work fly. 